Hello class! Tonight I am going to discuss the chapter 1 of our subject, Accounting Information System, which is the Information System and Accountant's Perspective. So what are the goals of this chapter? So the first goal is to recognize the primary information flows within the business environment. And you also have to understand the difference between AIS and the MIS. Also, the difference of financial transaction and non-financial transactions. Wherein, uh, tingin ko, yung iba sa inyo ay may idea na kung ano ba ito. You also need to know the principal features of the general model for information systems and also understand the organizational structure and functions, functional areas of a business. And lastly, be able to distinguish between ito na, nakikita nyo na yung mga terms na to, external auditing, internal auditing, advisory services, and how they relate to accounting information system. This chapter is also divided into four major aspects of information systems. So, they are the information environment of the firm, the impact of organizational structure, the evolution of information systems, and the role of accountants in information system. Okay. Let us now discuss the internal and external information flows. So you can see here a pyramid which represents the information flow within a business organization. You can see here that it is divided horizontally into several levels of activity. Okay? So internal... Internal information flows are here, yung horizontal division natin, which are the top management, middle management, operations management, and operations personnel. So, uh, sino-sino ba yan? So, operations personnel, so they, they are the one that is directly involved with the day-to-day -day operation of the business. Example are the Manufacturing, sales, and distribution. And then, sa taas nila, nandun yung tinatawag nating mga operations, management. This, these are, or this division is their immediate supervisor. They are involved with the day-to-day -day operations or managing the day-to-day -day operations of the business. And then, sa taas nila, nandun yung middle management, which are involved with the short-term planning, na nag, nagko-comply naman with the long-term planning na ginagawa ng top management. So, para explain lang, simple lang, yung top management, nagfo-formulate sila ng goals, okay, and objectives as a whole ng entity. And then, pagdating sa middle management, sila naman yung nagpo-formulate ng mga strategies on how they can achieve those goals and objectives na binibigay ng top management. And then, from there, pababa naman yan sa operations management, ito, dito, clear instructions na yung ibinibigay nila. Okay? Hanggang papunta dun sa operations personnel which are the one who is doing the day-to-day -day operation. Okay. So ano naman yung mga external? So ang external natin, they are parties that are outside the entity. Examples are the stakeholders, customers and suppliers. So nagmeron din tayong information flow dito kasi nga di ba? Uh, the stakeholders, they are asking for information from the top management because they are, um, they are, okay, they want to know what is the performance of the entity. Example nyan, yung mga investors, okay, 
Tapos, ang mga shareholders, even though they are the owner of the corporation, they are considered as external because they are not directly involved with the management of the affairs of the business ng corporation. So, they are considered as external. Okay? More concerned lang naman sila if uh, the company is doing well, kung kumikita ba yung company, di ba? Kasi they are concerned kung kailangan pa ba nilang ituloy yung investment nila dun sa company o hindi. And also, the suppliers and then the customers, so you are aware naman na kung bakit kailangan din nila yung information coming from the entity. So, no need to further discuss that. Okay. Internal information flows. So, we have the horizontal and the vertical. So, kung mapapansin nyo kanina sa pyramid, di ba meron siyang division from top, middle, operation, hanggang sa personnel. So, yun yung horizontal. Okay? So, the, the information used primarily at the operations level cap to capture the transaction and opera operations data. Okay, ano example niyan? Yung mga sale and shipment of goods, use of labors and materials in the production, internal transfer of resources. Yan kasi, di ba, among themselves yan eh. Within one level, sila-sila yung nagpapalita ng information. Pag sinabi naman nating vertical, napansin mo nyo kanina dun sa pyramid, meron tayong downward arrow and upward arrow. Di ba? So, yung downward flow, yung downward arrow, it represents the, the downward flow. So, it means the information comes from top management to the bottom, which is the operations personnel. So, ano ba yung mga information na binibigay nila? So, these are the instructions, quotas, and budgets. Kasi, di ba, yung policies, yung procedures, sino ba ang nagpo-formulate nun? It is formulated by the uh, actually nanggagaling yung uh, main goal sa top management. Tapos, yung mga specific policies and procedures, ginagawa yan nung middle at saka nung operations management. Tapos, Binababa siya sa operations personnel para yun naman yung susundin nila sa kanilang day-to-day -day activity. Okay. Information objectives. So, what are the information objectives? The first one, to support the stewardship function of management. So, when we say stewardship function, the affairs of the business is entrusted to <coughs> management. Like I said, di ba, pag shareholders, marami sila. So, they can't, they can't manage the business of the corporation. Di ba, magkakagulo yan pag lahat sila magmamanage. Kaya, they are hiring CEO, CFOs, na itong mga ito, they are merely managers. Madi pa na lang, syempre, sa ibang case, wherein the CEO is also the major stockholder of the corporation. So, hindi lang siya manager, but also the owner. Pero, marami ding scenario wherein the managers are not really the owner of the business. Kaya, stewardship function lang sila. And then, to support manager management decision-making and also to support the firm's day-to-day -day operations. So, kanina, na-mention ko na rin to eh, how the information are used sa mga decision ng management and sa daily operation ng business. Okay. So, what is information system? So, alamin muna natin, di ba? Information system. First, what is information so, information is a process data. Di ba? Process data siya. Pag sinabi naman natin system, it is a group of interrelated components that serve a common purpose. And there are two kinds of system. The first one is natural and the second one is artificial. So, from the word itself, we can 
we can clearly understand the concept. Pag sinabi natin yung natural, example niyan, yung system of galaxies, stars, and planets, it is not created by man. It is naturally there. Okay? It is created by God. And the second one is artificial because it is man-made. Okay? Gawa lang natin yon, such as yung clock, social system, hanggang sa information system. So, information system is an artificial system. <clears throat> so, what is the meaning of an information system? So, it is the set of formal procedures by which data are collected, processed into information, and distributed to users. Sound familiar, di ba? Because when you look at the definition of accounting, makikita mo to eh. Di ba? Collection, processing of information, and distributing to users. Okay. Transactions. Oh, alam nyo na yan. You are familiar with that. What is a transaction? So, it is it is an event that affects or is of interest of the organization and is processed by its information system as a unit of work. And it is divided into two. Okay? The first one is the financial transaction and the second one is non-financial transaction. Okay. So, sa accounting, ano ba ang nire-record natin? We record, yes, financial transactions. Ano ba yung mga example ng financial transactions na yan? Yan, sale of product, purchase of inventory, cash disbursements of or cash receipts. Okay. So, kaya natin ito nire-record kasi it has, it has effect on the assets and equities of the organization. Okay? It will either increase asset or decrease equity or decrease asset and increase equity. So, when we say equity, don't be misleaded. When we say equity, dalawang klase ang equity. We have the owner's equity and the creditor's equity. Owner's equity yung capital, creditor's equity ay liability. Okay? So, non-financial transactions. So, all other events processed by the organization's information system. For example, ayan, non-financial. Adding new supplier of raw materials to the list of valid suppliers. So, nag-add ka lang ng supplier dun sa list mo. So, ito, hindi natin to i-record as entity. Kasi wala naman tong effect sa asset and equity ng organization. Okay? Pero, hindi ibig sabihin wala itong impact sa accounting information system. May impact ito sa accounting information system. Kahit na siya ay non-financial transaction. Okay. So, transactions, you can see here, financial transactions and non-financial transactions are both um, put into information system. And then from the information system, the information will be used by the decision makers. Okay? Oh, example nito, yan. So, gaya ng sabi ko, it doesn't mean na non-financial, eh, irrelevant na. Kasi yung example nga dito, Ang non-financial transaction is the collection and tracking of stock prices. For example, yung company, meron siyang software or system na ginagamit na nagko-collect at nagta-track ng stock prices. For example, uh, nag invest kasi siya into stocks. So, yun, mga data na yun, yung mga information na yun, they are non-financial because they are merely tracking stock prices. Wala pa talagang... Uh, nangyayari na financial transaction, kaya non-financial. So, nagiging financial transaction lang siya when the system places an automatic buy or sell order when stocks received a threshold price. For example, this certain stock, gusto nilang itong ibenta at 100 per share. So, kapag yung tracking system nila nakita na na-reach na yung price na yun, um, may mga system na automatically pinaprompt na ibenta o bumili ng stocks na yon 
So, dahil doon, ito, financial transaction na to because it will affect na the asset and equity of the entity. Okay, so nakita ninyo, non-financial and financial, transa uh, financial transactions work together. Okay, in the information system. So, tapos na tayo sa information system. Ngayon, what is accounting information system? Okay. Accounting information system is an information system that, what? Di ba, naalala ninyo sa definition ng accounting? Sabi, accounting is an information system. Bakit? Because it identifies, collects, processes, and communicates economic information about the firm using a wide variety of technology. Ano yung mga example niyan? Yan. So, di ba? They collect information from source documents. So, yun na yun, di ba? Sabi niyan, identifies, collect, and process. So, paano ka nag identify from the source documents? And then, i-collect mo yung information. And then, you will... <clears throat> yan, post to the ledger. And then, prepare the financial statement. Okay, next one. It captures and records the financial effects of the firm's transaction. Diba? From the source document, titignan natin ano yung transaction. And then, we will analyze what will be the effect on the asset or equity or certain uh, accounts. And then, we will analyze if it is debit or credit. We will enter it into the journal. Hanggang sa makaprepare tayo ng financial statement. And then, it distributes transaction information to operations personnel to coordinate many key tasks. Example niyan is the credit limit. So, ano, ex paano natin masabing credit limit? For example, there is a certain customer na gusto uling umorder, gusto mag-purchase on account. So, bago sila i-approve ng mga sales rep, ano mo na ang kailangan gawin? They should use the information on that certain customer and see if that customer already reached the maximum amount of credit. Kasi if na-reach niya na yung credit limit niya, hindi na siya pwedeng umutang pa uli. Okay? So, that's how accounting information aid um the operations personnel. One example lang yan. Okay. Next is AIS versus MIS. So, ano ba ang major difference nung dalawa? So, kung mapapansin niyo ang pinakaiba lang talaga nung dalawa, pag accounting information system, it involves both financial and non-financial transaction. Gaya nga yun ang explain ko na kanina. Pero pag management information system, non-financial transaction lang siya. Kasi itong mga information na ito, ito yung ginagamit ng management para makagawa ng mga managerial decisions. Kung baga, ini-aid sila no itong mga information na ito para makagawa sila ng uh, decision nila. Ayan. So, there is also a diagram here na pinapakita yung AIS versus MIS. So, medyo malabo na, maliit na, pero you have a copy naman of this slide. So, kita nyo naman na yan. So, hindi ko na siya i-discuss further kasi sa next slides, i-discuss naman kung ano-ano ba yung mga yan. Okay? Kasi di ba under AIS, nandyan yung TPS, GLFRS, and MRS. So, ano-ano ba yung mga yun? They are the AIS subsystems. Okay, so what is TPS? Oh, TPS is the Transaction Processing System. It supports daily business operations. Ano example ng TPS? Ayan. Ang example niyan ay yung recording sa accounting records such as journal and ledgers. 
And it also consists the transaction cycles. Ano ba yung transaction cycles na yon? Yung revenue, expenditure, and conversion cycle. Ano ba yung revenue cycle? Pag sinabi natin revenue cycle, ito, pag-aaralan nyo pa ito in detail sa mga susunod na chapters. Pero bigyan ko lang kayo ng uh, bird's eye view. When we say um, revenue cycle, ito yung from selling of the merchandise hanggang sa maging AR siya, hanggang sa makolekta siya. Yan. Ang expenditure naman, yung pag-place ng order, hanggang sa ma-receive mo yung goods, tapos maging accounts payable, hanggang sa mabayaran mo. Pag-conversion cycle naman, is paano may co-convert ang raw materials mo into finished goods. Yan. So, yun yung ibig sabihin yan. The other one is the general ledger or GL or FRS. So, kita nyo naman, di ba? Magsisimula ka sa TPS, yung journal and ledger mo. Ngayon, pag may journal and ledger ka na, magkakaroon ka na ng GL, which is the general ledger, na doon nakasummarize lahat ng financial transactions. For example, ano-ano ba yung mga nangyaring transaction na involved ang cash? Doon mo na siya makikita. Uh, involve ang AR, involve ang... Kung bagay ito, may kita mo dito yung mga specific accounts na. Pag FRS naman, financial reporting system, ito na, imi-measure na, ire-report na, tsaka i-communicate na yung financial information. By means of what? By means of financial statements or reports. Pag MRS naman... MRS is the Management Reporting System. It produces special purpose reports for inter internal use. Uh, sa mga susunod na, na subject ninyo, magkakaroon kayo ng management accounting. So, sa management kasi, saan ba sila nag-base ng decisions nila? From the information din naman na binibigay ng accounting. Ano example niyan? Budget. Ayan, so accounting din ang naggagawa ng budget, di ba? Bakit ba tayo gumagawa ng budget? Okay, kasi through budget, pwede ka magkaroon ng threshold sa mga costs and expenses mo. Tapos, magkakaroon ka ng comparison kung na-meet mo ba yung uh, target budget mo para dun sa expenditure na yun. Tapos, doon nila ini-evaluate kung okay yung performance. Ano naman yung variance reports? Uh, example nito sa merchandising. Kunwari, ang target ninyo na amount ng raw mats ay 2 pesos per unit lang. Eh, ang nangyari sa actual, 2.50. So, may variance ka na 50 cents. Ayan. So, ngayon, anong implication nito sa management? So, pwede nilang tingnan dyan, bakit nagmahal? Anong pwede natin gawin para uh, maging mas mababa yung presyo? Kailangan bang magpalit ng supplier? Kailangan bang magbalit ng materials? So, yun yung mga consideration na ginagamit. Okay. Okay, next. General Model for AIS. Sabi dito, it describes all information systems regardless of technological architecture. So, lagi nating tatandaan na kahit na, ang dami kasing lumalabas na iba't ibang klaseng technological architecture. Pag sinabi natin ganun, yung mga platforms, yung mga systems na lumalabas. Okay, kung paano gagamitin ang accounting information system, mga ERP system, mga accounting software. Kahit na magkakaiba-iba pa sila ng architecture, iisa lang ang model niyan. Okay, iisa lang yung model na sinusunod niyan. Kasi nga, lalo na pag accounting, meron tayong sinusunod na standard. So, what are the general model elements? O, oh, ayan yung mga general model elements natin. We have the end users. Sa end users, dalawa yan. We have internal and external. So, sab nakalagay dyan, structured ang external. Bakit structured ang external? Kasi, di ba sino ba yung mga end user na external? So, they are the government. They are the share... Holders, the investors, 
So, meron yang sinusunod na standard. Pag magpapasa ka sa kanila ng report, ganito dapat yung standard. Kaya, structured sila. Pero pag internal, management lang yung nakakailangan ng information. Usually, wala yung uh, definite structure kung ano yung kailangan nilang information. So, yun yung kukunin nila na, na report. The second one is the data sources, third one data collection, data processing, database management, information generation, and then the last one is feedback. So, inisa-isa ko lang kasi sa mga susunod na slides ay i-discuss naman yan. So, dito tayo sa data sources. So, what are the data sources? So, these are financial transactions that enter the information system from internal and external sources. Okay. So, ano ba yung mga external financial transaction? Ang example niyan, di ba, yung nagbenta ka ng goods and services, nagpurchase ka ng inventory. So, galing sa labas. Okay. Yung information mo. Pag naman internal financial transactions, ang example niyan, yung movement lang ng raw materials into working process. For example, from the procurement department, hindi yung raw materials nila, ngayon kailangan na sa, sa production department. So, hihingi na ng issuance of raw mats yung production para ma-process na nila yon So, internal lang yun. Kasi hindi naman lumabas yung Uh, hindi naman siya lumabas within within the entity pa rin yung nangyari so internal financial transaction yun okay ngayon the objective here is to what to ensure that uh, event data entering the system are valid complete and free from material error Ayan. So, kaya nga dapat ang data source uh, binubusisi. Kaya nga, ba diba, example na lang yan yung mga voucher, mga invoices. Lalo na yung pag magre-release ng cheque, mag-a-acquire. Kaya meron yung mga tinatawag nating mga authorization. Merong mga tao na nag approve niyan. Hindi yan pwedeng basta ka nalang bumili, basta ka nalang mag-issue ng cheque. Okay, it should be approved by authorized personnel. Kasi nga, kapag yung mga data na yan ay hindi tama, walang nag-check, walang nag approve papasok yan sa information system. At pag mali yung ipinasok mo sa information system, mali na rin yung lalabas na information, yung mapaprocess na information at yung reports na magigenerate from there. Okay? So, kaya nga dapat talaga ay tama, valid, and complete, and free from material error. Okay, the next one is transforming the data into information. Okay, so alam naman natin, di ba, Data. Ano ba ang data? So, data are facts which may or may not be processed. So, hindi kasi lahat ng data pinaprocess. Okay? So, ano ba example ng data? Birthday mo, pangalan mo, address mo. Yan. Lahat yan mga data yan. E ano ang information? Information causes the user to take an action. That should be taken. Ngayon, ang information, ito na yung pinagbabasihan ng decision. And also, it is also, uh, called as process data. Okay. Ngayon, ito ha. Hindi lahat ng information ay relevant sa lahat ng user. Example. Ayan. Daily report listing raw material inventory items that are at low levels. Anong ibig sabihin yan? Uh, ito yung report na nagpapakita. Ano ba yung mga inventory items na malapit ng maubos? Kasi low level na sila. 
Pag ang gagamit niyan ay purchasing agent, napaka-relevant ng information na yan. Bakit? Kasi kapag nakita niya na low level na yung item, ano ang action or decision na gagawin niya? That is to order. Okay? Make an order of that item para wag silang maubusan ng stocks. Pero kapag yung information na yan ay napunta sa personal manager, ano lang yan? That is actually, that is not an information for him. That is merely data. Data lang yan para sa kanya kasi wala naman siyang gamit doon because ang concern niya is the personnel of the entity. Okay? So, gets nyo? That's the, the, the explanation for data to information. Ngayon, paano daw matatransform ang data into information? So, kailangan ito, data collection, data processing, data management, and information generation. Dito muna tayo sa data collection. Ano ba yung data collection? So, that is capturing transaction data, recording data into forms, and validating and editing the data. So, gaya nga ng kanina, na-discuss na rin, you will collect this data from the source documents. Example, yung check voucher, yung receipts, mga billings, mga invoices, ayan. Okay, collecting data only once made available to multiple users. So, ang kagandahan nga, kapag ka meron kang information system, um, One data lang. One collection of data lang. Tapos, pwede na siyang magamit ng multiple users. Kasi, sabi rin dito, capturing data more than once leads to data redundancy and inconsistency. Uh, simple example na lang dyan yung ano eh. Yung, yung game na bubulong yung nasa una. Kunwari, mayroon kayong game. Ay, ipapabulong is ganito. Ibubulong mo siya hanggang doon sa likod. Ano yung nangyayari doon? Pagdating sa likod, iba na yung ano, iba na yung word, iba na yung phrase na sinasabi niya. Kasi nga, habang sinasalin-salin yung data, anong nangyayari? Nagiging prone siya to inconsistency, prone to error. Tapos, ito pa, redundancy. Kaya nga, ang goal sa data collection, dapat makapture mo, makolek mo yung data once lang. Only once. And it can be used by various or multiple users. Okay? Next is data processing. So, pag uh, data processing na, ito na, classifying, transcribing, sorting, batching, merging, calculating, summarizing, and comparing. So, task range from simple to complex. So, dito na pumapasok yung ano eh, yung kung sa accounting, para mas makarelate kayo, sa data processing, dito na papasok yung stage wherein mag post ka na sa ledger, magpe-prepare ka na ng trial balance, gawa ka na adjusting entries, tapos gawa ka na ng worksheet. Yan. So, yun na yung data processing. Okay. Next, data management. So, dito na-mention yung tinatawag nating database. So, you are very much familiar with that. Ano ba ang database? So, this is the physical repository for financial and non-financial data. So, pagka old school pa, filing cabinet. Pero kapag modern na, Actually, computer desk, hindi na nga rin ito ganun ka modern. Kasi ngayon, cloud na tayo. ba diba? nag store na tayo ng data sa cloud. Okay. So, here, may na-discuss dito na tatlo. Data attribute, record, and files. Ano, ano ba, ano ba yung pinagkaiba-iba nitong mga to? Okay. So, data attributes, ang example nito is, kunwari, ay accounts receivable. Okay, attributes. 
So, ano example niyan? Customer account number, name, address, balance of account, plus credit limit. Kumbaga, pag, pag uh, translate natin in, ito sa, kunwari, isang tao. Kunwari, ako na lang. Ako. Ano ang data attribute ko? Pangalan ko. ba diba? Age ko. Address ko. Ayan. So, yun yung mga attributes ko. Yung AR, ganun din. Tapos, kung napansin ninyo dito sa customer account number, may nakalagay ako na key. Okay? Because this is the key data. Bakit? When we say key, ito kasi yung pinaka-unique sa kanila. Gets nyo? Kunwari, uh, sa AR, AR attribute na lang. Diba? Pwedeng Several customer, pare-pareho sila ng balance of account. Pare-pareho sila ng credit limit. And pwede ring may magkapareho ng address. At pwede ring may magkapareho ng pangalan. Pero, hindi sila pwede ring magkapare-pareho ng customer account number. Okay? So, sa, sa data processing, napakahalaga niyan. Kapag mag store ka ng data, dapat merong isa na unique na attribute para mas madali mong ma-search. Okay? Madali mong makita yung record. O, number two, record. Ano ba yung record? So, ito is complete set of attributes na for a single occurrence. For example, yung accounts receivable, record yun. Okay? Composed of different attributes. Ano naman yung file? Complete set of records na yan. Example, inventory, accounts payable, AR, payroll. Ayan. So, yun na yung, yung file. Okay. So, sa data management, sabi dyan, meron nga rin daw dyan yung storing, retrieving, and deleting. Pag sinabi natin storing, ito na yun, yung mag-a-assign ka nga ng key. Para mas madali mo ma-distinguish yung bawat file or record sa, ba sa bawat isa. Kaya nga dapat may key ka, may unique identification ka. Retrieving, yun nga, from the database, i-extract e mo na yung information. And deleting, kumari, redundant na yung information. Tapos, obsolete na, hindi na siya kailangan. So, kailangan mo na siyang i-delete. You have to remove it from the database. Okay, next. Information generation, ano ba siya? It is the process of, yan, compiling, arranging, formatting, and presenting the information to users. So, ito na yung, ano na, may output ka na. Ano, ikocompile mo na siya, i-arrange mo na siya, tapos ipepresent mo na yung information. So, gene-generate mo na nga siya. Kino-convert mo na siya into output. So, what are the characteristics of Okay, what are the characteristics of useful information? Naalala ninyo sa nung first year kayo, di ba? Qualitative characteristics of accounting information or financial information. So, regardless of physical form or technology, useful information has the following characteristics. Ano yung una? Relevance. Pag relevance, ibig sabihin, it serve its purpose. Parang yung example ko kanina, yung report sa inventory with low level. ba? Diba? Relevance kasi it depends kung sino yung gagamit. Okay. Ngayon, yung mga information na ipepresent mo, dapat relevant siya. Magagamit siya. Timeliness, no older than the time period of action it supports. Kasi nga, di ba, kapag late na, hindi na rin naman magagamit yung information. Accuracy, free from material errors. Oh, mahalaga yan. Completeness, all information essential to a decision or task is present. So, dapat kumpleto siya. So, dito na rin papasok yung tinatawag nating materiality. Yan. And then, summarization. Aggregated in accordance with the user's needs. So, these are the characteristics of useful information. Tapos, 
uh, pahuli na dyan, hindi kasi kasama sa slide, yung tinatawag nating feedback. Di ba yun yung pinakahuli, yung number 7. So, what is feedback? It is the form of output that is sent back to the system as a source of data, internal or external. Okay. Pag sinabi natin feedback, so, medyo alam nyo na rin, di ba? Uh, binabalik sa'yo. Kung bagat, humihingi ka ng opinion kung okay ba o hindi okay. Kung tama ba, kung accurate ba or in accurate yung information. Okay, so so that is feedback. Pwede mo siyang makuha internal, pwede mo rin siyang makuha external. Internal pag within the firm, external pra, pag outside the firm. Okay. So wala rin sa slides ito, pero we need to discuss this. These are the uh, kinds of acquisition of information systems. Dalawa yan. We have the de uh, develop customized systems and then second one, purchase pre-programmed commercial systems. Pag develop commercial systems, yung company mismo, gagawa sila ng kanilang information system. Sila mismo yung magde-develop. Pag naman, uh, yung pangalawa, bibili na sila ng programmed na, pre-programmed commercial system na. Okay, so may mga nabibiling ganito. So, hindi na nila kailangan gumawa. Ngayon, there are three basic types of commercial software. Yung una, turnkey. Pag sinabi natin turnkey, kompleto na to, tested na to, ready for implementation na. So, kung bagay, install na lang sa company mo, tapos implement mo na agad-agad. Pag naman backbone, a basic system structure lang na ibibuild mo pa. Kung baga, ipapersonalize mo pa siya. Ang nandun lang, yung system structure lang. Kaya ito, i-develop pa siya. Pag vendor-supported naman, so purchase commercially rather than develop in-house. So, ito, pinurchase mo siya, hindi mo rin siya dinevelop. So, so paano yun? Kasama ba yun sa develop customized system? Hindi. Kasi pag develop customized system, ang nagme-maintain nung system ay yung company. Ang pinagkaiba nito, binili mo siya, commercially developed na siya. Pero, wala sa'yo ang maintenance ng system. Yung vendor pa rin, yung nagdidis, nagdi, siya ba, yung vendor yung nagdesign, siya yung mag implement at siya rin ang mag ng system for you. Kung baga dito, makikigamit ka lang nung system. Kaya, kasama rin siya sa purchase. Okay? Ayan. Okay. Next. Organizational structure. So, here, kailangan nating maintindihan ito. Ano ba yung organizational structure ng business? Kasi, di ba, as accountant, you need to understand the nature, the operation ng business na ginagalawan mo. Kasi, Napaka-crucial ng role ng isang accountant. Lahat kasi, bawat department, involved lagi ang accounting. Okay. So, organizational structure, the structure of an organization helps to allocate what? The responsibility, authority, and account stability. Kaya nga, di ba, inaalam natin ano yung structure niya. Pag sinabi natin yung structure, Katulad kanina sa pyramid, di ba? We have the top management, middle management, operations management, and the operations personnel. So, yun yung structure niya. Para malaman, sin sino ba yung may responsibility sa ganito? Sino ba yung may, ano ba yung accountability ng ganitong department? Ano ba yung responsibility nila? Ngayon, there are three basic common approaches sa pag structure ng organization. The first one is the geographic location. So, aware naman kayo dito, di ba may mga company na hindi lang sila nag operate sa isang bansa. They operate in sa several uh, countries. Kaya yun, geographic location. Uh, yun yung structure nila. Hinihiwa-hiwalay nila geographically. The reason for that is, kapag merong iba, nandun sa ibang lugar, pwede lang makuha yung market nun. Expansion din kasi yan. Number two is the 
product line. For example, yung San Miguel. Oh, marami silang product line. Ano yon? Sa kanila yung Bimeg, sa kanila yung Magnolia and Monterey, sa kanila yung Pure Food, sa kanila yung Lapasita, sa kanila yung Great Food. So, yung structure naman nila, hiniwahiwalay nila according to product line. Okay. So, nakita nyo, magkakaibang product line pero iisa lang naman ang may ari. Yun yung kanilang organizational structure, product line. Another one, business function. Pag business function naman, katulad nito, marketing, production, finance, and accounting. So, hinihiwahiwalay naman nila yung kanilang structure into different functions sa business. O, iba yung marketing department, iba yung production, iba yung sa accounting department. Yan. Okay, next, functional segmentation. So, yun na nga yung kanina, yung by function, di ba? Yung marketing, yung materials, yung production, yung marketing, distribution, personal finance, accounting, and information technology. So, hindi ko na siya ipapaliwanag isa-isa pa kasi I know naman that you have an idea na kung ano-ano itong mga ito. Okay, and then you may read it dun sa textbook na binigay ko sa inyo. So, tingin ko self-explanatory na ito. Okay, next. Accounting independence. So, information reliability requires accounting independence. So, what is accounting independence? Ang ibig sabihin nito, tayo, yung sa accounting, dapat separate and independent tayo from other functional areas that is maintaining the resources. Ano example niyan? Simpleng paliwanag na lang yan ay yung tinatawag nating proper segregation of duty. Okay? So, para mas maintindihan ninyo, isisimplify lang natin. Example, sabi kasi dito, it should be separate from uh, functional areas maintaining resources. Ano ba ang resources? One example of resources ay cash. Okay? So, kung ikaw ay accountant, hindi ka pwedeng maging treasurer. Bakit? Hindi pwedeng ikaw yung humahawak ng pera, ikaw din ang nag-a-account. Okay? Sa so, naintindihan nyo, meron tayong independence from that. Bakit? Kasi that would be incompatible. Bakit? Pwede mo kasing dayain. Pwede mong i-manipulate yung information. Pwede mong i-manipulate ang record. So, dapat yung nagmamanage ng resources ng company iba, iba din yung nag-a-account ng mga resources na yun. Yun ang ibig sabihin ng accounting independence dito. Another one, accounting supports those functions with information but does not actively participate. Yun din yung sinasabi ko. Ang accounting, more on giving of financial information but they are not the one participating actively in that certain function. Okay, decision makers in this function require that such vital information be supplied by an independent source to ensure its integrity. So, tama naman yun eh. Para may integrity, dapat walang ano, independent yung source. Okay? Independent dapat siya. Kasi kapag ka dependent yung source, baka magbigay siya ng biased information. Okay. Next, IT data processing. So, paano ba dinidistribute ang data? So, meron tayong distributed data processing. We have the centralized data processing. So, paano ko explain? Uh, pag centralized data processing, ang magandang example dito, yung ginagamit na system ng PUP, yung SIS. Siguro na encounter nyo yan. Saan, saan nang gagaling ang approval ng subjects? At lahat ng klase ng approval, mostly ay nagagaling from the main. Kasi nga, centralized data processing tayo. So, may mga data na pwedeng i-process within the branch, pero hindi lahat. So, even grades nyo na lang. Once we finalize it, we cannot change it. Nang gano'n na lang, we need to go to Manila 
and then reason out why we have to change your grade and there will be several procedures bago pa ma-approve yun because centralized data processing tayo pati enrollment di ba nasa iisang server lang yung ginagamit nating system kaya nga minsan anong nangyayari pag nagkasabay-sabay ay mabagal yung system So, ngayon, meron tayong tinatawag na distributed data processing. Ano naman yung distributed data processing? So, sabi dyan, IT function is distributed to end user and placed under their control. Ang, ang example nito, kunwari, yung SIS, magkakaroon na ng sarili yung PUP Lopez. Hindi na nakadepende sa PUP main. Yun yung tinatawag natin na DDP model. Okay. So, kasi may mga nakikitang disadvantages sa centralized. Pero, mind you, marami ring disadvantages sa DDP. Ano yung mga disadvantages na yun? Ayan. So, the disadvantages of DDP is first, loss of control. Maybe this is the reason why sa main pa rin ang gagaling yung approval. Para controlled pa rin nila. Besides, the budget and even nga payroll namin, pinaprocess pa rin talaga sa Manila. For the reason of that, I think, control. Tsaka inefficient use of resources. So, <clears throat> example ko pa rin yung system natin. Uh, pag may mga project sa Lopez, dadaan din yan muna lahat sa Manila. Bakit? Kasi chinecheck nila eh. Baka mamaya may mga inefficient use of resources na nangyayari. Kasi nga, ba diba, malayo tayo from them. So, kailangan nila tayong i-monitor. Ano pa? Destruction of audit trails. Ayan. Ang PUP, ino-audit yan ng ano? COA, Commission on Audit. Kasi nga, PUP is a state university. It is under the Philippine government. So, that's the reason din kung bakit centralized tayo. Para may mayroong audit trail yung mga auditors. Ano ba yung audit trail? Ang audit trail, ito yung alam niyo naman, trail. Yung step by step, yung pwede nilang balikan. Kunwari, itong amount na ito, saan ito nang galing? Babalikan nila yan step by step para makita kung tama ba yung ginawa na recognition and recording ng transaction. Okay, number four, inadequate segregation of duties. Oh, kasi nga, di ba, kanwari sa Lopez, konti lang naman ang personnel kumpara sa Manila. So, paano ka magsesegregate of duties doon? Unlike pag Manila, marami sila doon, malaki yung fund nila, they can segregate the duties. Uh, mahirap kasi yan kapag ka walang segregation of duties. Pwedeng magkaroon ng ano, collaboration among the employees to do to do ano to do illegal acts yan to tamper information mga yan another one uh, inadequate ah uh, sorry number 5 increase programming errors yan system failures and lack of standards so ang daming disadvantages pero may advantages din syempre ano yon cost savings Increase user satisfaction, improve operational efficiency. Kasi nga, pagka sa main, mas, mas maraming resources, mas maraming uh, qualified personnel na pwedeng gamitin. Yan. <clears throat> Next, accountants' unique roles in AIS. Yan. As accountant, sabi ko nga, hindi lang tayo basta nagde-debit credit, gumagawa ng financial statement. Meron tayong unique role sa accounting information system. Bakit? Kasi nga, tayo ang nakakaalam ng concept. So, dito, sabi dito, Computer programmers with no accounting or business training assumed full responsibility for the design of AIS. But, what happened it violated accounting principles and lack necessary controls so hindi ito kayang gawin mag-isa ng computer programmers kailangan ng involvement ng accountants 
kailangan sila sa ano? Sa design ng system. Tayo yung kailangan para ma-design itong AIS na ito. And also, accountants should actively participate in systems development projects to ensure appropriate systems design. So, kunwari, na-design na, nagawa na yung AIS. So, syempre, hindi yun dun titigil. You still need to develop it to enhance it. Involved pa rin dapat dun ang accountants. Okay, next, accountants as system designer. So, accountants are the domain experts and responsible for the conceptual design of the AIS. Ano ba yung conceptual design or conceptual system? So, these are in, this involves specifying the criteria for identifying delinquent customers and information that needs to be reported. So, actually, ito specific example yung nakalagay dito. Eh. Pero, ang ibig sabihin lang ng conceptual system, tayo kasi ang nakakaalam ng mga standards, accounting standards, at saka controls na kailangan para dun sa system na yun. So, tayo yung expert. Alam natin yung nature ng information. Alam natin yung dapat puntahan na destination ng information na yun at yung mga accounting rules na kailangang i-apply doon. Kaya nga, tayo ang in-charge sa conceptual system. Ngayon, ito, yung mga IT professionals, they are responsible naman for the physical system. Nandaan nyo ha, accountants ay sa conceptual system ang... IT professionals ang sa physical system. Ano naman yung physical system? These are the medium and method for capturing and presenting the information. So, kung baga, ito yung infrastructure ng buong system. Okay? Next, accountants as system auditors. So, dito i-explain. Ano bang pinagkaiba-iba nito? External, internal, and fraud audit. So, pag sinabi natin kasing auditing, this is the independent attestation performed by an expert. Sino yung expert na yun? Tayong mga accountants. Okay, what is external or financial audit? <clears throat> So this is an independent attestation regarding the fairness of the finance of the presentation of financial statements. So we are giving assurance. Okay, any assurance na binibigay? Uh, take note ha, we are not giving conclusion. Pag conclusion kasi you are 100 at uh, almost 100% uh, sure. We are just giving attestation or opinion. Nasa opinion natin, based on our expertise, ay ano, fair yung presentation ng financial statements. Now, there are two types of evidence. The first one is the test of controls, and the second one is the substantive test. So, sa auditing, ganito. Bago ka gumawa ng procedures, tinetest mo na yung control. Ano ba yung control? It pertains to the internal control of the company. When we say internal control or test of control, we are testing that the information is managed under a system that provides correctness. Okay? Ibig sabihin, ganito. Pag may gumawa ng voucher, ibig sabihin, may nag approve Okay? May nag-validate. May nag-check. Para ma- make sure natin na dumadaan siya sa proseso na may nag-check noon. So, ibig sabihin, okay yung internal control niya because there is someone who is uh, checking the correctness. Ngayon, ano ang connection noon sa substantive, sub substantive test? Ang substantive test kasi, ito, tinitest mo yung accuracy ng bawat account, ng bawat item. For example, yung cash. Ano, kukuha ka ng population, itetest mo kung tama ba ang computation niyan, tama ba yung ginamit na treatment. Ngayon, ano ang, ano ang connection ng dalawa? Kapag weak, weak ang internal control. Extensive ang substantive testing. Parang ganito. O, observahan ni auditor, paano ba sila mag-release ng cash? Pag nakita niya na weak, big sabihin, walang control. 
walang nag-check, walang nagmo-monitor. Ano yung pwedeng maging observation mo diyan? Baka mayroong material misstatement sa item na yun. Kaya anong gagawin niya? Extensive yung substantive testing niya. Baka nga ang mangyari niyan, lahat ng item i ano niya? I-test niya. Hindi lang siya kukuha ng population. The whole item na ng cash ang itetest niya. Kasi nakita niya na mahina ang internal control. Pero, pag nakita niyang strong ang internal control, kaya nga vice versa, ano naman ang mangyayari? Hindi na ganun ka-extensive ang substantive testing niya. Kasi pwedeng mag-conclude siya na maaring ah... Uh, Okay, hindi hindi prone to material misstatement yung cash. Yan. So, yun ang external financial audit. <clears throat> okay, what is the difference between a test service versus advisory services? Kasi nga, di ba, pag accountants, ang dami nating pwedeng maging racket. <laughs> racket talaga yun. I mean, ang dami nating pwedeng maging trabaho. May at a service na tayo. Meron pa tayo ad advisory service. Eh, yung iba kasi pinaghahalo-halo yun. Pinagsasama-sama. Wherein ngayon, hindi na talaga yan pwede. Okay? So, ano ba yung mga example niyan? Auditor may not provide. O, mahaba yan. Yung bookkeeping under other services. Yan. Uh, financial Information System Design and Implementation. So, bigyan ko lang kayo na, ano, hindi ko na isa-isayin yan na. Uh, example niyan, uh, pag ikaw yung nag-audit, gumawa ng external auditing, hindi pwedeng ikaw yung gumawa ng financial statement. Kasi diba, paano mo itatama yung sarili mong gawa? Dati kasi pwede yan. Ako na yung gumawa ng FS, ako pa ang nag-audit. Ngayon, hindi. Pag auditor ka, dapat iba din ang nag-compile. Ang tawag doon ay compilement or compiling the financial statement. Iba yung nag-prepare ng financial statement. Ano pa? Pag ikaw ang auditor, hindi pwede ikaw din ang nag-design ng accounting system nila. Kasi incompatible yun. Okay? So, may mga ganun. Hindi dapat lahat, parang ang tawag dito, kung sa engineering, pwedeng hakutin niya lahat, pero sa accounting, hindi pwede na lahat ay ikaw na. Okay? Next, internal audit. Ano bang internal audit? An independent appraisal function established within the organization to examine and evaluate its activity as service to the organization. Pag sinabi natin internal audit, ang tinitingnan talaga niyan, yung efficiency ng operation ng business. So, it's more on the operation of the business. Yun ang internal audit. Compliance ng operation. Ayan. So, doon nakafocus ang internal audit. Pag fraud audit naman, investigate anomalies, gather evidence. Para ka ditong detective. Minsan, gina nag hire sila ng fraud auditor kapag ka may suspect siya sila na within the organization ay mayroong mga gumagawa ng mga malicious act or criminal act. Ayan. So, dyan papasok si fraud auditor. Yan ang ginagawa niya. Uh, initiated when corporate management suspects employee fraud or board of directors hire fraud auditors to investigate their own suspected su suspected executives okay so sila yung parang mga ano mga detective yan maganda ring trabaho yan fraud auditor okay and then the role of the audit committee So, the subcommittee of the board of directors, ito nire-require na ito. Napansin ninyo na may nakita kayo ditong SOX. Ibig sabihin niyan, Sarbanes-Oxley Act. Um, ito, ano, discuss ko na lang siguro yung Sarbanes-Oxley Act in detail dun sa isa nating subject. Yung governance. Okay, mas appropriate kasi ito sa corporate governance. Pero, ito rin kasing accounting information system na iba yung ano niya eh, na iba yung direction niya because of this act. Okay? Kaya din pati nagkaroon talaga ng strict implementation na sa corporation dapat may audit committee. 
Sino ba yung mga audit committee na ito? They are independent na nag-check and balance ng mga internal audit function and liaison with external auditors. So, external auditors and internal auditors work hand in hand. Okay, usually three people. So, ito naman ay mga basic uh, requirements pero pattern dito sa Amerika. So, ang role lang talaga ng audit committee Um, they work hand in hand with the external auditor para pag may mga kailangan yung mga external auditors, sila yung nakikipag-coordinate. Okay. While the external auditors are conducting their audits. Okay. So, that's all for, for chapter 1 of accounting information system.